This past week, we've been pursuing freedom in Jesus. There was a sermon about freedom. There was a video like this, calling us to make freedom a priority in our week. And as I remind you of these things, you might be thinking, oh boy, I completely forgot about that. Well, if I wasn't the one making these videos, there's a good chance I'd forget about it too. So don't feel too bad. Instead, just begin today by engaging in what we're doing in 10 weeks of summer. This is not the only way that God can restore our souls, but it is a way that he's restoring our souls. And if we do these things, make a focus priority to seek restoration from God, it'll change our lives. It's not too late to engage in 10 weeks of summer. Check out the website, catch up on the things you've missed out on, and take this week ahead of us and make it a priority to pursue restoration in Jesus. I'm in this awesome place and there is nobody else out here. The last 10 minutes of the drive, there was nobody on the road. There was nobody in the parking lot. There's nobody on the trail and there's nobody up here at this beautiful mountain lake. But there's something I want you to hear. Listen closely. Did you hear it? That was about 20 seconds of me not talking. It wasn't complete silence. You heard whatever was coming into my microphone. Uh, you heard whatever noises were in the place you're watching this. But other than that, there was no intentional communication. Did it feel a bit long to be quiet? It's unfortunate that the most common word we use to describe silence is awkward. It's an awkward silence. We're uncomfortable with silence. And that's really unfortunate because silence is so powerful. The Bible has some wisdom on this. The Psalms say, be still and know that I am God. Isaiah says, in quietness and trust is our strength. Jesus would often withdraw to lonely places and pray. And when the noise got too much, he would invite his disciples. He said, come with me by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. And it's not just turning down the noise that's important and, and having nothingness. There's actually something in that silence that we need to hear. There's this wonderful sentence in Desire of Ages, um, page 600, or 363, and I memorized it on the hike up to this lake. And it says, when every other voice is hushed and in quietness we wait before him. The silence of the soul makes more distinct the voice of God. So when we turn down the noise, there's actually, uh, the reason we do that is we want to hear something. We want to hear God speak to us. So this week, intentionally, we don't have questions for the trail. I've been giving those as ways of making conversation throughout our week about these points we're seeking restoration in. But there's just something that feels hypocritical when I talk about silence. There's value in talking about it, but to make our point more strongly in our minds, we're not going to have questions to add to the noise. Instead, I have an exercise for the trail or wherever you are. Do this. Make an intentional effort just to get silent with God. Don't worry about bringing anything to him in that moment. Just sit there. Maybe he has something for you. And if silence is part of your daily routine, I invite you this week, make an extra effort to turn down the noise. Do something additional to get quiet before God. We live in a noise overload world. There's so many things grabbing at our attention and pulling at our ears. Make an extra effort. If you don't have space in your daily routine for silence, just find a few minutes and sit there before God in silence.
hey, send me some pictures. It's awesome that you're getting out and enjoying summer and doing stuff, but there's a price to pay for skipping church. Pictures. Let us know how God is restoring your soul. See, I have this idea that 10 weeks of summer can be a community experience. You can send in videos, testimonies, text, pictures of how God is restoring your soul. And the blessing to you can become a double blessing as it is shared. Good idea, isn't it? But it hasn't really caught on yet. So you can be a trendsetter for something meaningful. Share something with me this week. Thank you.